Amp Studio has added a new synthesizer called Granny, which is a granular synthesizer. Let's take a look. So here is Granny in all its glory. A granular synthesizer, if you're unaware, uses grains of sound to create new sound. And the way you can kind of think of this is like a sandcastle. A sandcastle is this great, really cool thing, but it's made up of a bunch of tiny grains. And those same little grains of sand can build a whole bunch of different kinds of castles. There's also different kinds of grains, right? We have grains that bigger grains of sand, smaller grains of sand. Some of them are denser in different areas of the sand castle, and some of them are less dense in other areas. And all these differences can allow you to create all these different kinds of sand castles using the same grains of sand. And it's the same idea with granular synthesis. Sound is made up of a bunch of essentially little grains of sound, right? We could treat this little section right here as a grain of sound. And then the next little section as another grain. And the next is another grain and so on and so forth. And we can use these little grains of sound and play them back in different orders and in different pitches and all these things to create new creative sounds. That is exactly what Granny does for us. So here I've got the very first preset, it's called Fatness. Nice. So in any granular synthesizer, you're gonna have a big area to load up samples. So here we've got our basic sample. We could grab any old sample. We grab this clap sound and toss it in here and play a clap synthesizer if that's what you really wanna do. You might be going, how does it sound like that though? How the heck does this work as a granular synthesizer? So let's go back to our basic preset and dive into what exactly is going on here. So to start us off, we've got the ability to set start and end points. This is where it looks at, where Granny looks at to select the grains. So we could go ahead and restrict its area that it can look at. And it changes the sound. And of course, depending on the sample, this could have really dramatic effects on what it sounds like. Very small samples or small areas to look at will cause grains to generally become more metallic in nature. You get some really cool sounds that way. Now we've got a, the ability to change the position. This is where it starts from. You might be going, why would we want a position control? Why don't we just, you know, change where it starts from? Well, the reason is, is we can have a lot of grains going at the same time. And we can actually use a what's called a modulator to change where these grains are selected. We'll get to that in a second, but just to put you at bay for now, that's why there's a control here for position and why we don't just change the general control. We also have an offset. Now the offset right now, if I play it, it's very mono. It sounds like it's in the middle of our speakers. Offset will make it so that one speaker sounds just before the other speaker and it makes it sound like it's in space Like we've uh, positioned it somewhere in a room as opposed to just having it sound like it's like straight in the middle Suddenly it's a much wider sound You can double click to reset values. You've also got speed and this is how fast it plays through the sample And this, can, this is an important control to know about here. We don't really want to use it because it's already been set up real nice. But if I were to drag in that clap sample again and play some notes, you notice we don't get any playback now. Well, if I change the speed, suddenly we're getting playback. And if I were to go ahead and just, you know, dial in a selection here, like pick grains from this area. But if I had a speed of zero, we don't get any playback. So speed's an important control. If you don't get any sound out, take a look at your speed control here. So let's go ahead and go back here. I really like this uh, fatness sound. And let's go over to the grain menu. So the grain menu, you're gonna see two things in, in when it comes to grains that are really important. You're gonna see a duration control and a length control. So a length control is simply, you can think of it as just a volume control for the grains. So that's uh, so you have like all these different pieces it's picking out like a piece here maybe a piece here it plays them and just how loud those pieces are over time is controlled by the length but it keeps the length of it uh, which is ironic it's kind of confusing because there's length and then there's duration it, it keeps the duration of it the same 
but duration, how how long a grain is, it can affect its pitch. Shorter sounds, shorter shorter grains will get through their cycle a lot faster, so the pitch will go up. But if you have a longer one, it's going to take longer to go through, and so it'll sound like a lower pitch. And that's what duration does. It changes, uh, you can think of it as it changing the pitch of the different grains. So you can see that's now we've got a radically different sound as opposed to something that's much shorter. Yeah, so this could be really fun to mess with. We're going to come back to this. We've also got a key follower. What key followers do is they simply will pitch things as you play higher notes. They'll pitch them higher and they'll pitch them lower as you play lower notes. So right now, if I play this note here, it sounds pretty high and nasally, but I can actually bring this down and it's going to play a much lower note now. Despite me playing the exact same note. If I play the note and move it at the same time, That's what the key follower is going to do. So if you want to dial in a range, go ahead and check that out. We've also got some pitch randomization that can happen for our grains, which in this case probably isn't the best idea. But it can add some interesting variation to your sound, especially if your sound's more of an atmospheric or a percussive sound. Next up, we have amp. And in the amp, it's kind of some standard stuff in here, but there's Again, two controls that are named what sounds like the same thing, but they're different. So for example, we've got level. This is just how loud it is. Let's move our uh, duration back a bit. Okay, so there, and that's just a demonstration that a small move can make a really big difference when it comes to granular synthesis and when you have very small grain selections. Okay, so that's level standard stuff. We've also got this gain control. Gain is going to be better demonstrated if I play higher notes. So some of the grains that it's picking, right, because it's just picking little bits and pieces to play back to us, and it oscillates through them very quickly. Well, some of those are going to be softer just because it maybe picked a range of small of a, a, where the amplitude was very low. And so in order to fix this, what we do is there is a gain control here, which will make those louder. Now this can really have some weird effects on the loudness of the sound. So it's one of those things you can come in and try out and see that you like what it does. But you see there's some, the notes now take on very different characteristics and we would have to actually turn down the level if we want to turn the gain up. So with the gain completely off, as soon as you turn that gain on though, like at all, it starts to just really pop some of that higher stuff out. And finally, we've got stream. Now stream is the number of grains you can have. So we can have, by now we've got two, we could have seven. And then you immediately hear the pitch going all over the place. That's because we have a big duration. And so like I said before, the duration when they're all bigger, they're gonna have just different pitches depending on how, how long each one is. So we go ahead and reduce this to a small number. It becomes a lot more consistent. And then we can go ahead and use the pitch shifter. You know, we can make this at like the same note. Or we can bring it up an octave. I personally like the, the lower down an octave. If you bring the duration all the way up, that can oftentimes become very tonal as well. So it's kind of like a process. And so it's, it's a really interesting effect to have. Definitely something to consider automating. We also have a pitch control. This just repitches everything. So we're playing up two octaves. We could bring it down an octave, up an octave. We could change the note. We could, you know, bring it down. So this is just essentially half steps. You have a fine tune, which is in sense. And then you have a formance control. Formance gets into overtones and it can get pretty complicated. Uh, it's actually one of the ways that allows us to talk, right? I'm changing the formants in my voice that allows me to form different words and things. It has to do with the overtones of my voice and the way I'm changing them. But there's another way to think of formants, and it's a little more true with this case. You can think of it as the chipmunk effect. As you bring this up, it's going to make things sound more like a chipmunk kind of a sound. On a synthesizer, synths are very regular, so it's, it's less apparent, but that's what's going on. And in fact, if we come into the presets, there's some vocal texture patches. These are so we've got voice samples in here. 
If we bring the form its way up. So you've heard form and shifts before. They're very common. And next up, we've got in two envelopes. So attack, decay, sustain, release. You can watch the Volt mini video if you want to see what envelopes are all about. I explained it a bit in that video. But essentially, we have one to control how a filter closes. So we bring the... Uh, the frequency down and the sustain down and the decay down. We get some nice wobbles and things. And then we've also got an amplitude, and this is the exact same thing, only just for the regular volume. Let's go ahead and make a sound now, taking all this knowledge into account. So I'm going to grab some string sounds. So I'm just going to grab this string right here. And if, it play, if it's a very long sound, just hit this play button to stop it. And... If I play a note, right now it's using that same envelope. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the filter to like 71, bring the sustain all the way up. I'll leave the release where it is and bring the attack down. I'm going to play some lower notes as well. And it's very, very short right now. I want to select a region that will sound cool. But right now, my grain size, the duration is just really, really small. So I'm going to open this up some. And I'm going to create an atmosphere sound. The, it's Granular synthesis is excellent for atmosphere sound. So I'm going to put down a MIDI note. We're just going to extend it out here. I'm going to hit play. And let's go ahead and mess with some of the things. And let's get into modulation a little bit. So there's an LFO in the background of this synth. And if you hold shift you'll notice things turn green. Anything that turns green can be changed over time by this low frequency oscillator. So for example, I could bump up the count of the number of grains that I've got, the number of streams I've got going on, and then I can come over to sample, I can turn this on, and I can have it change position over time to give me a more lush sound. And I'm getting cracks with popples right now just because my interface is not having a good time. So let's go ahead and bring the duration up even more and let's set a loop region for this as well. And let's play ourselves a lower note. Let's just bring the octave down. Let's choose a different area. And while we're here, I'm going to add two effects. I'm going to add a compressor. I'm going to use the compressor mini. It's got one knob called squash, and it's just going to make the volume more consistent and also bring it up for us. Like that. And then I'm also going to add a reverb afterwards because I already know I want this to be a pretty spacious sound. Now we have this shape control. I recommend just sort of experimenting with it. Right now it's on linear. Let's go for Gaussian. What the shape is going to do is it's going to change how it brings in and out the grains. And so you heard before we had a lot of clicks and pops. You can see it as it's going to smooth those pops out for us. Like that. We can mess with some... Maybe bring the duration up even more. Bring the count up. Bring the duration down here. Bring this up an octave. So at this point, let's go ahead and make a small melody. I've already kind of started. So I went ahead and added in a bass and a pluck sound, and this is what we have. If you've got any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.